Hey, welcome to Things I Learned Last Night. Welcome. It's a, it's a comedy <laughs> podcast where we laugh a lot, learn a little. This week's topic is an alien one, which means you probably found it when you're searching for your alien stuff. I'm just going to give you a heads up. You're going to hate us. You might like it, though. Tim it's likes fun. you. I hate you. <laughs> so, um, it, unless you like us. <laughs> In which case, <laughs> in which I, case like I like you. you. I only like you if you like me. <laughs> no, it's a comedy podcast. We learn a lot about uh, Looking Glass, some yeah, conspiracy theories on um, Dan. What was his last name? Burrish. Dan Burrish <laughs> and his wild true stories. Um, and uh, and maybe aliens are people from the future. Maybe aliens are are aliens from the future. Whatever they are, uh, it's a it's a good episode. It's very worth it. So uh, I've got some upcoming shows. All my tour dates are listed on my website. But one that I want to highlight is April thirteenth in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So if you are out west, out in the wild, wild west, come hang out on April thirteenth. I'd love to see you. This is a good episode. Let's get into it. Hey man, what's up? Have you ever heard of uh, Project Looking Glass? Project Looking Glass. Yeah, doesn't sound promising to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna love this one, man. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Project Looking Glass is. Um, I gotta be honest with you. The this is the this just might be like the alien episode to end all alien episodes like this has let's hope this has everything. It won't end them. Um, <laughs> they'll keep coming, but this one, this one is like this one's kind of I like, held out a little bit of hope that you were like project looking glass and then you were trying to bait me into being like into thinking it was an alien oh, episode. And then you were going to be like, oh yeah, it's like a, you know, a, a, a grocery store manager got in trouble because he was looking through the windows <laughs> at his employees and he would keep watch over his kingdom. Or and whatever. he called that project looking glass. Yeah, I'm just working on my project and uh, <laughs> instead it's uh, exactly what it sounds like. Great. I'm not going to. Yeah, I wasn't going to sugarcoat this one because cool. we got a lot to cover. There's a lot. It's an here. educational comedy podcast. <laughs> We're not here to actually talk about your stupid subject. We're here to laugh at you at yeah, your expense. At you. Yeah, you googled us. You found us. I'm glad you know how to use a computer. Why don't you use it? To find a girlfriend. <laughs> hey, I noticed that your tattoos haven't come off yet. <laughs> it's been weeks. <laughs> All right, so here's here's what they we're gonna won't wash off. Don't worry. I'm like a little worried <laughs> about that, it. That they're gonna just stay. That they'll stain my skin. Yeah, and my soul. <laughs> yeah, God doesn't love people with tattoos. He told me that when I got my first one. <laughs> he drove song or whatever. <laughs> As for me and my house, we will steal the Dead Sea Scrolls. As for me and my house, we will steal the Declaration <laughs> of Independence. He says, I don't speak a lick of English. <laughs> this is super weird, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably one of the weirdest things we've ever done. Things I learned last night. So here's 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 what I want to do for this. All right, I'm sure. going to tell you this story. Okay, as if it were a story I that was true that I totally right. believe. It seemed like you were like I'm going to tell you the story. <laughs> like I was like <laughs> right. uh, you're like there's <laughs> nothing you can do to stop me. You are gonna be able to stop like, okay. this. I'm gonna tell you the whole story, and then at the end, like we're gonna we're gonna discuss it. Like okay, but let's leave discussion for the end and conclusions for the end. Okay, because I'll take notes. The, yeah, yeah. Just leave. Save your questions for the end. You and the audience save your questions for the end because this is gonna be a ride. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, story starts with a guy named Dan Burrish. This is him. Um, he is I'm a doctor. Already. I don't give a crap <laughs> about this man. He looks like a turtle. He's a doctor and a micro. This guy. He actually does look like the turtle. I'm from not the joking. Master he looks like a stinking turtle, dude. <laughs> not even does. from Master of Skies. He, he looks like look Franklin's like dad. He does look like Franklin's dad. Um, here he is uh, in his lab. <laughs> Also, I want to highlight a few things in this picture. What is that doll on the wall? <laughs> it's on the wall. It's like pinned to the I wall. Don't think it's on the wall. I think it's floating. <laughs> it's hovering behind him. And I also love that he. I don't understand like the the scenario in which this photo was taken. All right, Dan, smile. <laughs> 
And then, and then right above his head, he's got this like gem manifesto. Chart. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. What Do you that see is. the letter? Yeah, and yeah. it's the list of names of people he'd spare. He'd spare. That's what I'm saying. Like that's crazy. Here's another one of him doing microbiology. <laughs> he's just so mad that someone is bothering him at work. <laughs> Someone's like, hey Dan, can I take a picture for the for the directory for the for the staff page? <laughs> what? No one's supposed to know I work here. <laughs> He's pretty happy in this photo. Yeah. Yeah, that photo was right after he pranked someone. He's like I'm <laughs> so funny. I got him pretty good. So Dan, he's a microbiologist. Uh, uh, PhD. I put I put one eighth inch staples in there. One six inch stapler. <laughs> it's, it's too broken. big. And it's jammed, and it's never gonna unjam. And now they gotta staple. go to Staples and buy a new one. Well, I'll tell you what happened: is I went into his office and I grabbed his stapler, and then I um, replaced the smaller staples with the larger ones. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for. Can doing I take that. your picture? <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get my doll in the shot. <laughs> can she be? Can I incorporate the doll is in every shot? She finds her way. Yeah. <laughs> the doll will find her way. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the the I don't like to use the D word, <laughs> but I didn't have the heart to change her name. <laughs> I she <laughs> has been a long time companion of mine. I found her in the desert in New Mexico <laughs> buried under the sand <laughs> and I love her a lot. Yeah, yeah, she I'm gonna put this in my that. acting reel. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get a, a role. You know, <laughs> that was pretty convincing while well, I um, I'm just accessing a part of my brain. Yes, that um, I do think that was good when you blinked there. I think you need to blink more with this character. No, look at his picture. <laughs> if anything, I'm blinking way too much. This guy blinks once a month <laughs> and he schedules it. Hold on. Look at his last picture. Hold on. I gotta. I gotta. This blink is a man who's on day 31. <laughs> He's about to blink quick. at the end of the day. <laughs> hey, can you go out tonight? No, nah, I gotta blink tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna blink tonight. <laughs> Close my eyes. I will <laughs> for the right. first time in a month. <laughs> we got so much to cover. Okay, so so Dan gets a job. All right, he lives in. We spent ten minutes <laughs> making fun of your freaking hero, <laughs> and you're still here. And then you're gonna leave a comment and be like, "I came for the content, not the jokes." Yeah, well. <laughs> um, so Dan gets, Dan lives in Nevada, Las Vegas. Obviously, he gets a job. Um. You know where, uh, and so one day he wakes up sure. and flies Alice Airlines, Janet, Janet Airlines. Like that felt weird because they so, fly him out to some sketchy place, right? Yeah, they fly. They they what they do if you don't know Area Fifty One lore, um, you go to Las Vegas International Airport. You go to the airport, you get in. There's an airline called Janet Airlines, and you have to have a special ticket. You I get fly on through the, Vegas all the time. Yeah, never seen it. <clears throat> well, it's pretty secretive. The should plane's I be, invisible. Should I be looking for it? The plane's invisible. Yeah, you could look. I they, they fly every day. It's just a one way trip every day um, for employees and it's probably like nine to five like so it's probably like one in the morning one in the evening. It comes back flying through Vegas Saturday. Yeah, take a look. See if you can spot it, but a Janet Airlines I, I bet by now they might have changed this because because if like and I don't know if they have like if they have a sign on it that says Janet like on the tail. That's kind of a sign. Like if you now paging all passengers. Yeah, for Janet Airlines, please check your carry on luggage <laughs> for forgotten firearms. You're gonna need them. <laughs> uh, so so flies Janet Airlines uh, to his first day on the job at Area 51. Um, he is at Papoose Lake, which is another name for you'll remember this S four. Yes. Uh, which is Bob Lazar's stopping ground. Yeah, that's where he that's where he did his that's where he found his doll. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the doll finds them. It's you don't you don't who find rescued doll. who? Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> so he gets a job and he's he's getting the tour like it's sure. like first day on the job. Here's a room you can't look at. Here's a room you can't look at. There's, There's no need for the can't. tour. Really, <laughs> you got to keep your eyes closed <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> which and they were like you. they were like 
Will you close your eyes to the yeah. tour? And he was like, <laughs> I can't for another five. Oh, hours. shoot. <laughs> I blinked by mistake. It's going to throw off my whole routine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my so morning mad. routine. My morning routine. I wake up. I drink a glass of water. I do two hundred push-ups. I read three chapters. I, I take an ice bath. Uh, yeah, because a cold plunge is good for the neural pathways in your brain. <laughs> and then I board a flight of a airplane that is discreetly named. <laughs> and I, f- I don't fly the plane, but I, I, I am a passenger on the plane that is flown <laughs> to Area Fifty. <laughs> three it's a theme park i work at it's a <laughs> theme park <laughs> and then i so day one they are they giving them a tour you think there's no reason yeah yeah i hey, do think i do don't think, go in this door don't go in this door <laughs> don't go in this they door. say here put on this blindfold put these earplugs here's in. the men's room here's some earplugs for your nose you where's can't the, where's anything. the women's room we don't we've never <laughs> seen one of them here <laughs> They don't like. We're pretty sure those don't exist. We're pretty Aliens sure exist. Women, pretty sure they don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we yeah, know they, how to talk to aliens, but not those. <laughs> not those. <laughs> so they go around S four, right? Um, and he's working on what's known as Alice's floor, and so <laughs> he gets taken up to okay. Alice's floor, and. Uh, in the entryway into Alice's floor, it got its name because above the door, there's a statue of a white rabbit, um, like the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Okay. Um, and so the idea is you're following the rabbit, you know? Sure. So in this floor, yeah, it's it's, uh, a, it's alien stuff. This is supposed to be. You're, like you're the, not the really selling floor. it this time. This is supposed usually to be the on alien floor. episodes. Usually on alien episodes, you're the one out here being like, and then they. Went okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. You're, you're, you're right, kind you're of right, being you're like, right, like right, oh, right. they want the doors, rabbit on the door, or whatever, <laughs> and ha ha ha. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. 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 So he walks into the the alien the Alice's floor, and Alice's sure. floor is where all the stuff is. In Alice's floor, there's a couple programs that are going on, and one of them is the program that Dan gets assigned to, and this is called Project Looking Glass. Okay. Project Looking Glass goes back many years, so we maybe need to peel the curtain back a little bit and rewind it uh, uh, back to um, I don't know eh, the late 40s, early 50s, right? Okay. Fresh after World War II. I thought you were going to say 1780. No. I was like, whoa. <laughs> no, not that far. Not that far. Um, the a United States uh, government learned about um, these Sumerian artifacts <laughs> uh, that were okay. How familiar are you with ancient Sumer? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like the back of my hand. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you for that. Um, so they they learned of these artifacts that were uh-huh. uh, in a museum in. Uh, Israel, Iraq. Oh, close. Um, which I don't think Iraq was the nation at that time. No, it was. Now that I'm saying that out loud, the Middle East. Yeah, uh, there was a museum that they learned that there was a cylinder seal in. Which here's a picture of a oh, cylinder a seal. This isn't the cylinder seal that were okay. In question, but the concept. What does cylinder cylinder seal mean? The concept was it was a little toilet paper roll, basically. That was a lot easier to put your toilet paper on. Um, and this guy got on Shark Tank for him. <laughs> no, uh, so it's it's this little it's too seamless. <laughs> it's this roll, um, and on the roll there's like the indents of an image, and so you could take a clay tablet and roll that image into that tablet. Got just roll it. the seal across, and this was used uh, for anything like seals were used for. So it's a lot like you know how like people would have the yeah. wax, and then they. Yeah, it's the same concept. You'd have your clay and you'd seal it with your your thing. That so this rolls. Yeah, you roll it across and it gives you that imprint. Okay. In the in the clay tablet, uh, and so this was something that was used pretty widely in ancient Sumeria. Um, <clears throat> well, the United States government gets word of these specific cylinder seals that were sure. for sale in uh, or not for sale, but were on display in this museum. Yeah, and and they're like start a war. <laughs> We just did a war and it was pretty sick. We won big time and we got to make we some pretty cool love stuff. 
more artifacts. We would love to do some more of that. And so they went over and they expected them to say no. So that way they could do the war thing. Um, but they said yes. Uh, they're like, yeah, you can buy them if you want. And so they okay, we'll get Hobby Lobby on it. <laughs> Do you remember when Hobby Lobby accidentally, like not accidentally, yeah. just straight up stole? Intentionally, yeah, stole a bunch of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah, yeah same concept. Uh, but they didn't steal them; they bought them. The, like the government, they're like that could have been us. It was a Sunday. <laughs> we don't, yeah, we don't work on Sundays. Uh, sorry, um, I don't theft on Sundays. <laughs> uh, <laughs> As for me and my house, we will steal the Dead Sea Scrolls. As for me and my house, we will steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> so they, uh, bro, have you seen these these polar bear <laughs> friendship bracelets? <laughs> what? They got these new friendship bracelets where <laughs> they have like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they got like a they come with like a QR code and like an app and they link to a polar bear so you can track your polar bear. And so you and your friend you get a polar bear. So it's like a Tamagotchi for <laughs> science. It's like a real but life a Tamagotchi. Real <laughs> and you and your friends can watch your polar bear and see what your polar bear is up to. Bro, my polar bear <laughs> is an idiot. He <laughs> fully drowned trying to grab a seal. <laughs> Yeah, imagine you get friendship places for your friend and your polar bear like immediately My dies. Polar bears drinking Coke. <laughs> <laughs> big fans. They're big fans of that. They've been selling them. Imagine you get those and your polar bear is just at the San Diego Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough of them. There's not. Yeah, you're right. Well, though, no, like eventually. Yeah, like you get one and then and then Do the you zoo have a star named it. after you. Has anybody ever named a star after you? No, that's such a scam though. You know how that you know that's not real though, right? I just had that conversation with Bree the other day. She didn't realize that. What? That's it's not real. What do you mean it's not real? It's, they're not naming the star. It's just some dude who opened up a website and was like, "Congratulations, your star is named after you." And then he gets you the the like he, all you're buying is the just the the what are you what is the word for that the certificate? But it's like, well, I mean, yeah, it's the same it's thing not as your real. degree. Yeah, but but all someone did was degree. buy Evangel.edu. <laughs> <laughs> and then you bought a piece. You paid him a lot of money no, 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 for no, no, a piece no. of paper. Because with that, there's at least some like paper trail with the government to make it official. Sure, sure, there's sure. There's no sure. paper trail with the government. Like there is nothing I anywhere. Mean, anything no I buy from Walmart, there's no other paper than trail. your certificate that says that that star is named after you. Yeah. Probably forty people have that star named after them because it's a scam. It's not That's a real it thing. It's not there's, an actual star. There's stars for all of us. There is, but it's not real. Is what I'm telling you. It's not actually naming the star after you. There's nobody out there that's there's Neil deGrasse Tyson doesn't get in his 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 magnifying glass his, his telescope and and look up and say ah look Rebecca James bought this star for her in 1984 that doesn't happen because yes, that's not does. how it works no it's not <laughs> yes it does oh my gosh <laughs> it's not real and also its name used to be Rebecca I changed it. <laughs> Because I because you can do that <laughs> for someone else. When I bought it, it was named Cold Front. <laughs> hey, thanks for checking out our show. If you like it and you want to support, be a part of what we're doing here. You can do that by becoming a patron. Uh, what happens there is you get to be in the community. Uh, we have a Discord with our hosts and producers. We have a lot of fun. We're super active in there every day. You get access to ad-free content a week before everybody else. And we have a Zoom every month with our patrons. Uh, we hang out. We eat pizza. We get to know you a little bit better. Uh, it's a blast. And there's a ton of other uh, different benefits like merch discounts, uh, birthday messages, things like that that are super cool. Uh, if you want to be in that, uh, you can just text Tillin to 66866 uh, and that'll get you right in there. Um, if not, we're just super glad that you're here uh, and thanks for watching our show. So he's learning all about this uh, or uh, the cylinder seals. The government gets the cylinder seals. Yeah, you can buy like kids and stuff <laughs> online. I heard but they're not real. It's just their certificate. It's, they're not real. It's just a certificate. <laughs> the <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> this says you're mine now. <laughs> I own that kid. <laughs> what? Excuse me. <laughs> it's just like a Getty. Image I own that, that kid. Dot com. <laughs> says.
<laughs> that I own that kid. So you cannot search that. You cannot <laughs> look that up because we'll be on so many lists, dude. I'm checking. <laughs> GoDaddy will not sell you that. <laughs> they might. <laughs> it's available. <laughs> it's a great deal. <laughs> It's such a good deal. I'm buying it. You know that's fake, right? It's real. You know, I mean, like you know, that, like there's no, there's nothing with the internet that says like you own that domain, dude. Like the gov- like there's no government paper trail. It's just GoDaddy selling you a domain. <coughs> could you could you make I own that kid dot com and then send it to an AI generator that just makes a makes an image makes of a an kid? Image of a kid? Uh, maybe. And then it, that way, it's kind of like that. This person doesn't exist. That's so funny, but yeah. it's just pictures of kids. This is super weird, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably one of the weirdest things we've ever done. I don't feel comfortable doing it, <laughs> <laughs> but I want the domain. <laughs> I mean, we, oh man, we've got <laughs> yeah. thinking how many seven forty sevens dot com. We how got many labs and Jan's living yeah, room. Yeah, we got Grandpa Hunts Me <laughs> dot com or whatever it is, and then we got I own that kid. <laughs> and we have Find My Grandma's House dot com, and I own that kid. <laughs> dot biz. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yikes. <clears throat> okay, uh, <laughs> cylinder seals. The government buys the cylinder seals because they are very. Um, the U.S. government buys them. Yeah. So have you ever heard of the Anunnaki? <laughs> okay, it sounds like a dessert. <clears throat> it does actually. We got to go a step deeper real quick. I got to tell you a little bit about the Anunnaki before I can tell you all, everything about the cylinder. Okay. Seals. The Anunnaki. Um, so the the ancient Sumerians, the first big. Uh, culture that like arrived on earth. Uh, they invented language, invented construction, all, all right. this stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> obviously, they couldn't have done that on their own. There had to be sure. aliens involved. Well, there's a storyline within their mythology about what they call the Anunnaki. And the Anunnaki were gods that came to earth and gave them technology basically to be able to build a bunch of stuff. They don't use that terminology, but that's how that's really what they're saying. Sure. Um, <clears throat> and the Anunnaki are giants um, who are from a different world um, okay. who uh, saw humans and thought they looked great. And so they reproduced with them and created half breed giant human beings. Um, <laughs> thought they looked great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you look good. <laughs> you look good. Uh, and so obviously there's a little bit of parallels between this and the Nephology from, sure. from the Bible um, and uh, the situation got uh, pretty serious led to a global cataclysm, which was the flood. Um, the storyline is that the Anunnaki will come back or are currently back um, and are involved in, in our world in, in some way. Um, yeah, they're dominating the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James goes back. Have to you ever seen room. an NBA player in person? Dude, they're they huge. are gigantic. They are tall. They are very tall, but this is a different kind of tall. Like this is and you're like, <clears throat> yeah, I'm a big person. Yeah, you, yeah, that's true. And then I walk up to him and I go, is this how everyone else feels? Yeah, kind of, but not sense. to you. Like you're not that I'm pretty big. I mean, you're yeah, you're taller than me. I'm like, I'm a big guy. <laughs> Say it again. I'm a big guy dot com. <laughs> well, frick, <laughs> I wouldn't go to that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to that. <laughs> Can you see my screen in the camera? <laughs> no. Okay, good. <laughs> hey. Well, okay, a little bit. Also available. <laughs> I'm a big guy.com. I'm a big guy now. We if we buy I'm a big guy.com and I own that kid.com in the same checkout, <laughs> then you're on a list. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Boss. <laughs> Boss, we got a weird we one. We got one. <laughs> so you're telling me I have to decide. <laughs> <laughs> so 
the Anunnaki made this. I, uh, I have Paul Rudd, the actor.com. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that I have Paul Rudd, the actor.com. <laughs> Frick. <laughs> It's all going to get linked back to him. <laughs> so the Anunnaki came to earth and they gave these cylinder seals to the sure. Sumerians to as at what seems like to operate with the way that I just described to you to use it as a seal to imprint clay with their messages and stuff. Sure. Well, <clears throat> what the United States government figured out uh, and really the CIA figured out is that that that's not the purpose of this, these cylinder seals. That's a cover. That's a front. That's that's a disguise. These cylinder seals are components to operate machinery, uh, Anunnaki machinery. The rolly stamps. Yeah, yeah. So these are these are components in disguise for Anunnaki machinery. And what they do is there is okay. There is a machine that the government is calling the looking glass that these are the key to be able to operate them. Um, and Dan Burrish joins Alice's floor years into this program uh, to join the investigation, basically to see if they can figure out how to work, use the cylinder seals to work the looking glass uh, machine, which is a, what was originally thought to be like a recover spacecraft, but was something a little different. Okay, and so the looking glass, the looking glass. Um, and so this, it, it appeared like a UFO, like a normal uh, flying saucer. They found this in, in the Nevada desert. Um, they thought this was a flying saucer. Or, what are you doing right now? I was just looking at my uh, <laughs> <laughs> and your domain registry. Yeah, I'm trying to find Paul Rudd, the actor so that I can set that up on. Oh, I think I'm logged into. I don't know. Where did I buy that at? Do we buy that Matillon account? Maybe I'm not logged in right now. I'd have to because I want it in my Instagram bio. I want my Instagram oh. bio to say state of comedian blah blah blah, and then my website link to just <laughs> Paul be paulreddyactor.com. The and then it links to Jared. Links to my links to your link tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. Um, I'll look after this. But also, I was just looking up apartments. <laughs> Just trying to find something else to do right now. Yeah, I was just thinking, <laughs> might as well do my taxes <laughs> while you're what rambling about do something else. So TurboTax.com. <laughs> I heard they do it for free. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they got to do it for free because no one's getting their returns this year. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, there thanks was a, George H W. <laughs> <laughs> His this fault somehow. All started with you. <laughs> it's his fault somehow. I like that. Uh, so the this craft that they recovered, they recovered it in the Nevada desert. They thought it was a normal UFO. Sure. They thought it was a spacecraft. But they, as they started researching, they they're were like, like, actually, we can kind of identify this they, thing. <laughs> they were like, this isn't a spacecraft. This is what they call the looking glass. And what they realized sure. is similar to. Ah, I should have got a picture of this earlier. I'm going to pull it up. Um, it's uh, similar to like a periscope, well, like a thing you look through. Kinda, actually, somewhat similar. There was a this project that uh, was done recently. Uh, let me see if I, I don't know if I can actually get an image of this. I saw a video of it. It was this interesting thing that I don't know who did this. Like if it was a like an organization or like like an artist or something. I don't it's know. David Copperfield. You're talking about <laughs> the time he made the Statue of Liberty disappear. Yeah, you know he's making the moon disappear. Did we talk about this? <laughs> We did talk about this. <laughs> what day? Uh, it's coming up. It's I'm pretty sure it's in February. So by the time this comes out, he did it. He did it. We we're all living. Wait, look it up. When does he do it? <clears throat> oh gosh, I'm trying to Google something else right now. When does David Copperfield make the moon disappear? Is one of the suggested searches. February 2024 is the plan. Uh, it says he says it's going well. <laughs> But yeah, there's not an, an exact date. It's I just, just think it's so it. freaking funny that now the internet exists and he's going to be on TV being like, whoa, well, the moon's gone. And then there's half of us on TikTok being like, we got it. We got it. We found it. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. Uh, 
anyways, there, there was an organization that what they did was they put up this big screen in a city and it was like, it was like had this big round, like pretty, Okay. It was like a mirror, like you know when you see like a good mirror. And it's got like a the, good mirror, yeah, yeah. The yeah frame yeah. had a good frame, and but it was big. It was like the size of like a person, like really big. You know? Sure, maybe two persons. Uh, <laughs> sure, people, you know, if you will. You know how sometimes when people talk about tents, and it's like a one person tent, two person tent, three person tent. Yes, I used to think it was like a one percent tent, <laughs> two percent. Three percent, like and milk? I always, yeah, I always was like, why are they doing? What is the percentage? Like, what are, what are we? What's it a percent of? And I was like, do we have a hundred percent tent? How big is that? Because a four percent tent is pretty big. <laughs> Anyways, they built this. They built this big screen in a city. Okay, and then they built it in another city, uh. like on the other side of the world. And you could come up as a looking glass. You could look through and see that other city. And oh yeah, and so people would come up and they'd see the people in the other. It's city like when Howie up. Mandel was like as a, <laughs> as a three D <laughs> person in in <laughs> Vegas. You're saying that's alien technology? Yeah, yeah, same concept. But <clears throat> but instead of instead of just seeing another city in real time, like what's happening live, you with the looking glass get ready for this. You can see the future. Mm, you can see not just the future, but you can see the past. You can see the present, and you can see all possible timelines. So you could tap in and see whatever possible timeline humanity could take sure. at any point in that timeline. Um, and that was a looking glass, but they couldn't operate it reliably yet reliably. They could operate it, but not reliably. And so the Sumerian seals were the tools that they needed to operate. I don't know if they're the joysticks or whatever. I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Like what what they they? I don't know exactly how they work, but they were a component that was needed to operate the the looking glass machine. And so they they got those. They started working on it, and then Majestic Twelve came into the picture. You familiar with <laughs> Majestic Twelve? <laughs> yeah, are you familiar? No. Okay, this is what that I do want to do an episode on. So I'll give you a very high level picture of Majestic Twelve real quick. Majestic Twelve was an organization. And then Majestic Twelve came in the picture. <laughs> You're familiar? <laughs> no. <laughs> Stupid. Majestic Twelve was a uh, <clears throat> an organization within the government. Probably still exists. Uh, they call themselves a Majestic Twelve or maybe Magi Twelve. One of the two. Oh, I've heard of Magi Twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the other name. Sometimes people get tripped up. Um, and it was just it was a, it was an organization of like elite people within the military and government that oversaw the whole UFO alien operation, but they are the also the ones who are keeping it secret. Like, so they are, they're a, a like not an actual government organization. It's like a club within the government. That's keeping all the other kids out. They're like, okay, you can't sit with us and we're not telling you about the cool stuff we found in. Yeah, ancient sure. Sumer. Um, and so since the 12 gets their hands on it and they start studying it and they realize that they're the operators. You can operate this and you can see in the timeline, um, but the operators of it have to have special abilities um, and by special abilities, I mean <clears throat> uh, psychic abilities, right? Obviously, <clears throat> and so they start uh, looking for people with it. Yeah, so they they link up with their friends at the Montauk project and they start working with remote viewing and using the looking glass item to remote view into other timelines and to other eras to see all these things and they're recording all this data of what's going on, but they're having some strange interferences where people if uh, if you had two groups of people, you had one that was um, say an atheist and one that was a Christian and you had them view Israel in 33 AD one saw Jesus on the cross and the other right. just saw the city of Israel. And so it looked like there was like people's biases were like influencing what they saw. Um, and so they wrote a computer program that allowed them um, to uh, focus the the um, the visions, the things that they were seeing through the looking glass um, to get more reliable pictures um, and okay. more accurate pictures. And through this development, they started to gather all this data and realize um, kind of a startling trend arise. And they had they were tracking all these different timelines, um, but what was strange and in, in their mid nineties, they started to notice that all the timelines began kind of converging into a single point and then they ended and there wasn't any more timeline after this. 
and that point was 2012 December 21st 2012. <laughs> I remember that. Yes. Yes. And so this was also the Mayan calendar. Hootie cackle. And did what did you just? That's say? what we call oh, it. We call it hootie right. cackle. That's right. You, your teacher named it that. Yeah, that was a hootiecackle.com. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a honky tonk bar. <laughs> Come on down to hootie cackle. How do you spell pants a required? Cackle? Shirts or not? <laughs> Speaking of pants, so they wrote this program and they realized all the data is converging on December twenty first, right, twenty twelve. Uh, and so what they began to uh, theorize is that the world's going to end on December 21st, 2012. Coincidentally, in the 90s, there was a crash in Arizona, UFO crash. In that crash, there's four life forms, all dead, allegedly. But we know... From Bob Lazar's account. We know... That there was one survivor, and they go by the name J Rod. <laughs> and J Rod, uh, okay. <laughs> and J Rod is what's known as a P fifty two, and that stands for fifty two thousand years in the future. And P fifty two has started giving the United States government, military, CIA, all these entities. Um, some insider baseball on what's going on because he doesn't really have a choice, you know, torture. Oh my God. And so J rod who's is, being tortured J rod the alien It's being tortured by the CIA. <laughs> They're waterboarding him. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what you know. And he <laughs> says, <laughs> says I don't speak a lick of English. I don't, speak <laughs> I don't know how to say your words. <laughs> <laughs> So my grand that's what my wife's great grandma sounds like. <laughs> well, I- <laughs> so the the P52 uh-huh. explains that um hey, you guys are on the right track, but you got a long way to go. Let me just kind of tie this all up for you, like tie this together for you. Okay. So what's actually happening? I'm from the year 54,000. Uh is uh aliens as we know them are not aliens. They're humans 52,000 years in the future and they have been coming back to our time frame uh, in the timeline because 2012 there is a calamity that happens. There's a pole shift and the the poles shift and creates all these earthquakes and tsunamis (laughs) almost completely obliterates the world. Yeah, tons of species die. Tons of people die, but there's and these Gen Zers don't even remember that that we lived through that. (laughs) We survived the calamity, and they don't even recognize it. The calamity, yeah. And so there's this big calamity, uh, but there's a remnant of humanity that survives. Unfortunately, the the pole shift made Earth inhabitable, but uninhabitable. You're right, uninhabitable. Thank you. Uh, Made the Earth uninhabitable. But they obviously a bunch of them survived, so they got to find a way to live. So they go underground, and they rebuild society underground in Earth. Okay. And while progressing through their culture, they learned a lot of technological advancements that eventually allowed them to learn how to alter their DNA. And part of altering their DNA was making it to where their bodies could survive underground better. So. They altered their skin tones. They changed their eyes. They reshaped a lot of their bodies uh, and a side effect of that made them kind of robotic type people um, and it also made them look like, like aliens. this <laughs> because yeah. obviously big big beady sure. eyes can see better in the dark. Sure um, the everybody knows caves smell real bad so they have the smaller noses or no noses at all um, and they wanted to know more stuff so they made their brains bigger um, and then uh, they're underground so that they don't get any suns. Their skin changes. Um, Odd job hats is going to have a <laughs> real good time in the future. In the future, yeah. Um, so they, they, this is the society that humanity lives in for many, many years. Sure. Well, they too learn time and learn how to manipulate time, and they see this timeline thing, and uh, they start to notice that there are some other branching timelines that could affect their existence because if that calamity doesn't happen, 
this society doesn't exist. And obviously the people who live in that society wanted to want exist. to exist. So they're trying to make sure that 2012 happens while well, they realize there's some other branching realities that are hoping that 2012 doesn't happen. And they realize there's another group known as the P 45s <laughs> who didn't experience the calamity that are also going back in time trying to prevent the calamity from happening. And so these two organizations basically are at war with each other to try to make P 45 P 45. Yeah, and P 52 are at war with each other trying to make the end of the world happen in 2012. So that way the third world can begin. Hey, May 18th, we're doing another Till and Live at Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. I would really love to see you there. Tickets are available right now at the at the description of uh, wherever you're listening or watching. There's a ticket link. Your ticket gets you entry to the live show, but it also gets you access to the park for the entire day. So you can come in that morning, enjoy the theme park all day, and then that night we're shutting down the park with our show. Um, so we can't wait to hang out with you. Please get those fast. We'll see you May 18th in Branson, Missouri. So the, P-52. So the P45s are trying to make sure that 2012 does not happen. Yes. P 52s are like, let's go Coney. Yeah, well, they're like, yeah, Coney 2012. We got to end the world um, <laughs> and uh, the P 52s are either and we don't, it's not clear what the situation is here. They are either controlling or they are the Illuminati and they are trying to guide the world sure. to the end of the world because it, it's what they need. Um, they're also coincidentally um, alternating their DNA kind of messed them up a little bit and so they're also harvesting some old human DNA in the process. So they're abducting people and uh, we DNA. are backed up as they would say. <laughs> 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 it's like it's like it's inconvenient. It's like they're like, you know, we live to be 400 and I haven't pooped in 17 <laughs> years. We are so constipated. Give me your DNA. <laughs> also, we only have four fingers on each hand. <laughs> that was a bad idea. You don't realize how much that messes you up <laughs> until it's gone. <laughs> but as, we thought- <laughs> as our favorite musician Toby Max said, <laughs> You never know what you got till it's gone. <laughs> in this, in this ridiculous reality, where the world is. Yeah, the they listen to Toby Mac. All diversity is going good. I'm like a freak show. Freak show in your neighborhood. <laughs> they really resonated with that. <laughs> They're like, I'm a freak show. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so they uh, <laughs> they they've come back and they are occasionally abducting, getting DNA, but also more than anything, I trying to know, want to know, want to know what you would think. Of. <laughs> okay, <laughs> trying to drive humanity to its demise, um, but not really, you know, in a weird way, like kind of trying. It's to hard to throw up my rock fist <laughs> with only four <laughs> fingers. <laughs> throw up your rock fist if you feel it when I drop this. <laughs> 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 Uh, so uh, <laughs> they can't play guitar. They've only got four fingers. They've only got four fingers. Yeah, some chords aren't available to them. Um, they uh, so they're they're here just kind of trying to guide the world to the apocalypse, sure. right? Um, and Dan uh, learns all this when he gets his job, um, and they're like, "We need your help uh, with one studying this phenomena, but two helping us save the world." Uh, <laughs> Dan's like, "I'm just the microscope guy." <laughs> okay, I will. Get started on that as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, so Who Dan, do we want to win? Yeah, which one are we? Which one is our 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 guy? Um, so Dan works for S four for a few years and then leaves um, because he is concerned about the fact that the public doesn't know this and he thinks that the that we all deserve to know the truth. Um, and so he goes and he he becomes a whistleblower and starts telling sure. the story to the public um, and he like arranges in the early 2000s like these uh, Senate subcommittee meetings that he's supposed to have uh, that never happened, but he's talking about him because he's like he's like we need to get into a secure location so I can tell everything I've seen while he's also telling everything he's seen <laughs> outside of the secure location Yeah, secure location Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Show. I need to find somewhere to say. Well, Dr. Phil, I'm just letting you know. Well, 
well, Dr. Phil, I <laughs> just wanted to come on your program and I wanted to uh, alert your audience mm-hmm. that um, there is in fact some um, time travel issues that have arisen and I would like to just get the word out to the American people and also find love. (laughs) (laughs) That that was a turn I did not expect to see in this conversation. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'll tell you. uh, A little bit more Southern. Well, uh, no, it's there's a there's definitely a more in here. Yeah, there you go. Well, I'll tell you, um, you know, not a lot of people come over. I've been doing this for 40 years. And, um, you know, I can usually have a pretty good read of when people are, are fooling me, pulling my leg. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) oh, I assure you that I am, I am, I'm just having a conversation with myself over here. I'm just (laughs) playing both characters, bro. (laughs) Anyway, so he's telling the truth. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So Dan Dan goes on this campaign telling the story, and that's um that's Project Looking Glass. Okay. And I want to take a second to talk a little bit about Dan. Dan uh, is a microbiologist. He has a PhD um, from a university that says he's never been there before, but he says that he earned the PhD while he was working at S four, and they don't want anyone to know that he was they were working there, so it was secretive. And he obviously. Was like, the, but the university he said he attended was in New York. And so he said, well, they were flying me out on the weekends. Yeah. And I was taking classes on Janet the weekends. Airlines. On Janet <laughs> Airlines. Um, and the university's like, this is the, we don't do that. That's not something that has ever happened and will ever happen. And it's not true. He's a liar. Um, and so, so the doctor thing seems pretty questionable. Everything else in this story, most likely true. <laughs> no, uh, now uh, this guy also, um, uh, we know a little bit more about him. Not a lot more, but a little more. We know in 2003, he declared bankruptcy. Uh, and in that declaration, he declared his occupation as homemaker, which some people think that might've been him trying to cover up what he actually did. Uh, but he also, well, I guess you could say what I do is I um, make earth more of a home. <laughs> Uh, Why'd you say it like that? <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy. <laughs> that way was to such say a weird that. thing to say. He's like, "Sir, you're declaring bankruptcy I, right now. Can you be a little bit more clear?" <laughs> well, I. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, can we get into a skiff? Is there a secure place? What if I just from? changed my voice? <laughs> To be like this all the time. <laughs> I, uh, so he declares bankruptcy as a homemaker and okay. declares assets of three hundred dollars. Can't cash. believe that's not bringing in the dough. Yeah, uh, yeah. Declares assets of three hundred dollars cash and um, nowadays it would. Nowadays all you gotta do is put it on TikTok. You make money as a homemaker. You know what I'm tired of on TikTok. Okay, <laughs> I'm tired of all these like millennials being like we live in an RV for four hundred dollars a month. Quit posting that crap, okay? Because <laughs> here's what's gonna happen: your employers are gonna go. I mean, an RV is only four hundred dollars. <laughs> We're paying them too much. We can lower that down a little they bit. Can live I mean, in they, the RV. They're yeah. gonna force all of us to stay in RVs because you want to play the thornberries, okay? Don't do that <laughs> to us. Stop it. I yeah. don't want to live that. Life. Post more real stuff. My apartment, my one. Also, bedroom, you don't get it, you don't bath. get out of being trailer trash just because it's a <laughs> it's a different kind of trailer. Like trendy. you're still, <laughs> you're like, oh, it's an RV. <laughs> no, we made fun of you. Yeah, we still do. We still do. Yeah, but you just don't know it because you're in the RV on the other side of the city by yourself. Maybe take <laughs> some wall. notes on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um. So he and he's got like a, a half paid off car that he's declares what's what's interesting is he he talks about getting paid really really well at us for sure he declares bankruptcy and has basically no assets so there's some questions there um and uh um these well they they didn't want me to buy stuff 
these because th- <laughs> uh, <laughs> it makes it look like I'm doing stuff. I left it all in New York. I think with these, my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend's in New York. She has the doll. <laughs> She is the doll. Uh, my girlfriend's in New York. I keep this doll to remind me of her. <laughs> it looks just like her. In fact, it, it's kind of crazy when I pull on her arm. Her arm gets pulled in New York. <laughs> it's a voodoo doll. <laughs> yeah, the the P P fifty two gave me. I I said too much. I f- <laughs> <laughs> no. I I think also these pictures look very staged. I this one especially. He is wearing like kitchen gloves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and I mean I'm not a scientist. And it's like an outlet. <laughs> yeah, and he's also yeah he's like in a lab, but he's wearing this purple shirt, no lab coat. Like and the the gloves. counter the counter is covered in tin, <laughs> tin foil. foil. <laughs> like this is this does the not the cabinet see is covered in tin foil. This does not see like a real lab. Like <laughs> great, go back to the other picture. That's clearly the same microscope. He's just got a couple microscopes. He's got a couple microscopes that he moves around his house to be like, I'm a microbiologist. Yeah, because look at those boxes back there in the corner. That's his house. Yeah, this is his house. He's not. This is not. What's on his computer? Microsoft Paint. (laughs) Yeah, I can't tell. Straight up though. Can you zoom in? I don't know if I can zoom in from this like presenter, but we can try to get another one in. Crop it, because it looks like Microsoft Paint. (laughs) I wish we could zoom. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, I think that is it's either paint or like early word with just a picture on it. (laughs) I I think he's just yeah, this it's not convincing. It's not convincing and the majority of the story come. It comes from Dan Burrish. It actually comes from Dan Burrish, but it comes from a uh, comic book. No, well, I wish I wish it comes from a a like memoir almost from I don't know if memoirs right. Uh, this guy named C Ronald C Ronald Garner wrote a book alien disclosure at area 51 and he told a bunch of these alien stories and this is his book. <laughs> For the audio listener, <laughs> <laughs> there's no good way to describe this. <laughs> it's, it is a human being in a spacesuit. It looks more like a scuba suit from like yeah. 41, like a 1941 on their scuba back, suit. And there is a alien straddling them, <laughs> like making very, very strong <laughs> eye contact. <laughs> His eyes are like glowing. <laughs> and he's like, he's like holding them down. Like it's not just like a straddle, it's like a. Who is C. Ronald Garner? Do we know? So C. Ronald Garner is an important guy. He's an author and like a UFO enthusiast. Sure. He owns a museum. Uh, <laughs> this is his museum, uh, which is very convincing. Are these both wax figures? Uh, the the one on the left is him. Uh, the other one is a wax figure, and then the aliens are obviously wax. Those aren't real aliens. Um, but yeah, he's got this museum that. I mean, it's just like a bunch of if you're an audio listener, it's like paper mache UFOs that he's made. Yeah, um, and then yeah, like wax aliens or honestly, they're like might be stuffed animals um, and like a mannequin military policeman um, and he's got this museum. It's just this sad. Is, this is in um, uh, Roswell. He's got the little museum in Roswell. Yeah, uh, yeah, and he's capitalized on you it. You want to go? Absolutely. Um, uh, what's interesting is Bob Lazar, another employee of S four, says that this guy's full of it, and anybody who believes his story should be ashamed of themselves. Um, <laughs> pretty strong words from Bob, um, but Bob was never one of his words. It very much seems, and and here's the thing. Here's the thing with this story is it it touches just about every alien trope that exists. Yeah, like it like was all over the place. And it it hits everything, but it it just like goes like ankle deep. I love that it's like oh, there's there's two different groups of futuristic aliens, and they're trying to destroy us, and also trying to save us. Yeah, and they're also us, and the and world's gonna end aliens. in 2012. But they don't want to. But, but it, it might, might not, not if they if the other ones win. But it's also the Anunnaki, and it's also Majestic 12, and it's, it's also the Earth. Montauk Project, you know. And it's also <laughs> remote view. Like it is just is literally everything. Just 
duct taped together in this big mess. Um, and uh, people buy it. So uh, we're going to buy the book <laughs> and we're going to, we're going to write a new domains. one. Ooh. Fiddle off the alien. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you liked it, we got another one. You should check out Bob Lazar. That one's one that I actually believe, and I think he's actually telling the truth. So that's worth checking out. Uh, It's in the description. Uh, And if you want to watch next week's episode, it is available right now to our patrons. So you can follow the link in our description to become a patron, or you can text Tillin to 66866 and join right now to get access to next week's episode, as well as a lot of other perks. It's totally worth it to be a patron Uh, and shout out to all of our patrons for supporting our show and making this possible. Uh, But we'll see you next week for another episode of things. I learned last night.